Uh, hi, I'm David. I'm a lead engineer at Sesnam. Uh, does anyone know the company? Except the guys from Sesnam. <laughs> no? Okay, so Sesnam is a search engine which is local to Czech Republic. Uh, like, for those who are not familiar with the search engine market, like, it's pretty much dominated by Google all over the world. And there are very few countries uh, where there is actually some competition, and the Czech Republic is one of them. And we are very proud of that. Proud of that. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, we still maintain like 30% market share, which is pretty cool. OK, so as I said, I work on a search engine. As well, like especially on the crawler part, and the most important thing that crawler needs is to process a, like incredible amount of data. Like we, uh, yeah, we just need to like score them, select all of the like most relevant documents to the user, and we just send it to index, and that's where our job ends. Okay, so here's some timeline. Uh, we started using MapReduce in 2010, and we managed to get on pretty decent scale. We have like 40 billion rows in database, which is age base. It has like about 400 terabytes without replicas, so it's like pretty big. Uh, we download 300 million web pages every single day. We run on bare metal servers over two data centers. Uh, we have like over 13 petabytes of storage and over 50 terabytes of memory to do the computation on. So it's pretty decent scale. And it comes with a price. <laughs> so we were able to use MapReduce for years and we found out that it's really slow and expensive. It's in both in of terms of like development price because it's really inflexible if you want to express what you really want to do. And if you have like more complex business logic, uh, you need some like job chain of MapReduce jobs and like between each jobs you need to write everything on HDFS, you need to replicate it three times, you need to send it over the network and it's really, really slow. Uh, so we were seeking for a replacement. So in 2014, uh, we started a project that we called Euphoria API, uh, which was this like, engine independent programming model uh, that could do both batch and streaming pipelines. Uh, because like we had to maintain basically two code bases, uh, one for the like slow, slow path, which had really, really high throughput, and one for low latency one. So we kind of wanted to write all the business logic just once and uh, run it on both batch and stream. Uh, so it was basically a Java SDK that then translated to either Spark or Flink. Does this sound familiar to anyone? It should. So in 2016, Apache Beam was open sourced, and we were like, okay, may maybe they do very similar thing as we are trying to do. Uh, so it's basically the same as I described, except there they went a little bit further. Uh, like they want you to be able to write your pipelines in any SDK in any language that you can imagine, and then it just translates to the B model, and you can run it anywhere. You can run it on Spark, you can run it on Flink, on Dataflow. Uh, and there are so many emerging runners right now that you can, you'll be able to use in near future. So if you're interested in like running pipelines in any language, there would be really great talk tomorrow by Max and Ismail. It's called Python, Java, or Go. It's your choice with Apache Beam, so you guys should definitely go there. I'll definitely go there. Okay, so 
then we were kind of like struggling what to do next and we finally realized it doesn't make any sense to maintain our project anymore because like we needed to write our own runners and it had like really large development cost for the company so uh, in 2018 we managed to merge euphoria into beam there is a jira issue if anyone is interested and we have like really great documentation on the beam website and like if anyone wants to contribute to beam it's like really great community and they are very welcoming so it's really easy to start with it okay so our largest pipeline that we have uh, is basically doing that it's turning the internet upside down because like anytime you download a new document document in terms of search engine is it can be either like html page it can be an image it can be a video video pdf like many different things and you only see like the links that are like going forward from the document so you just like you know only forward network and what you re the question you really want to answer is what are the documents that i that are pointing at me and what i know about them like for example if they are all in english there is a really high probability that that the document it's pointing to is also in english or if all the documents pointing at it are link farms it's really high probability that it would be a spam so like we basically use this to like calculate some really really good signals that can be then used by machine learning models uh, for like search relevance so it's really important and this jobs uh, this pipeline it runs incrementally every single day and the inputs it needs to process it ranges from 50 terabytes to like 100 terabytes each day so it we actually tried to run it on Spark and we struggled a lot for like two years. So this is what we're going to go through so you guys don't make the same mistake as we did. Okay, so the biggest issue we encountered was the exponential data skew. Is anyone familiar with it? Yeah, there are a few people. Okay, so an example would be joining documents. That's what we already talked about. And it would be like joining it with some metadata about domains that it's located on. So if we look at the distribution, how it looks like, probably most of the websites would have like around 100 documents on it. Those are like mostly like blogs and those kind of small websites. And then uh, there is, for example, YouTube, which has like hundreds of millions of documents. And if you want to join it to a single key, you struggle a lot. So what are the solutions? Yeah, this is what will happen on Spark. Uh, you can see that like most of the splits would finish in like five minutes and then there would be one split which would finish in 30 minutes so it would like really make your job competition way longer than it needs to be so what you want is to evenly distribute the data data among splits so one solution would be not shuffle it at all so if in does is anyone familiar with map side join yeah, like three, four people. Okay, so map side join. Basically, if uh, you, you want to join two sites, left and right, and if one site fits in memory, you can just take it, you can broadcast it to all the executors, and you can just like map through the left side and just do in-memory lookup to the hash table that you have in memory. Uh, so you just collect it, broadcast it, and then when you're going through like single elements, you just look it up and you have your result. And you didn't have to send like hundreds of terabytes over the network just to do uh, join with like 
10 megabyte data set. But this is usually not the case. Uh, so another solution would be you could split the large keys. For example, if you have YouTube, uh, you can just like copy the key which is on left side. You can partition it and then you can evenly distribute the data among those partitions. Uh, this is hard if you have an exponential data skew because yeah, because you have to like calculate first like which domain domains you want to split and how much you want to split them, but it's definitely worth it. Okay, so another huge issue with Spark: all values for a single key must fit in memory. Uh, who is familiar with the difference of group by key and reduced by key calls in Spark? Okay. Okay, so I hope that everyone is familiar with MapReduce, right? So if you want to do a word count, for example, you just like need uh, to send all the same words with a value one over the network. And if you use an in-memory combiner, uh, you can combine it map side on map side and then you can just like send the combined result result to the reducer and you saved a lot of time a lot of network traffic and a lot of ios this is basically the difference between reduce by key and group by key reduce by key just takes combiner and it does in memory combine but the issue is that uh group by key is implemented using reduce by key which means uh, you get like list combiner and any value that goes to group by key you just add it to the list So it means like at the end of the day you'll just need to load the whole list in memory at once which is obviously a problem sometimes Okay, so there is a little quiz about group by key does anyone know what's wrong with this code because like we really struggled with this Okay, so so what happens if you take a byte array and you shuffle and you use it as a shuffle key? Like in Java, it just like defaults to object hash code, so it will be completely random. <laughs> so you don't have any guarantees where the key will end up. So this is something to be aware of. Also, if you're using composite keys that contains enum, it's the same thing. Should be really careful about that. Okay, so can we do more efficient? Of course we can. Uh, we can just like repartition and sort everything. It's kind of like going back to the map reduce, but it works. Uh, so you just sort everything by key and you just go key by key and only thing you need to load in memory is a single key at a time, which is perfect. So now everything should be okay, right? And we, we don't have any more problems. Yeah, then we get exception like this. We can see that like right now the distribution of data is pretty even, but there is still like one one task that completed in sixty minutes, which is like order of magnitude worse than the rest. And we can also see there is something called shuffle read blocked time and we we can see that shuffle was blocked for 20 minutes this is like one of the biggest scaling issues with spark uh, there is great paper from facebook it's called R riffle optimized shuffle service for large scale data analytics and it basically says that with an, with an increasing number of tasks uh, shuffle time and io requests you need to do, they grow quadratically. Uh, and the size of IO requests, they decrease quadratically. It basically means that like every task that completes just ends up with one, uh, one shuffle file on disk. So if you have like, I don't know, 100,000 tasks, you will end up with 100,000 shuffle files and you, you are doing a lot of random IO seeks 
and most of the like Spark clusters are just like on the Yarn and on HDDs, so it's not really random access friendly, and it will just kill the performance of the whole cluster completely. And it also has really bad impact on other jobs that are running there. So what you can do, you can kind of decrease the number of map tasks, but how you do it? You just like have larger splits for a single task, which means it will run, but it will run way slower because you'll need to do like a lot of disk spills. So it's a trade-off, but it runs. Uh, I think like Facebook has some ongoing work on this, and hopefully they will contribute it back to Spark. It would be really awesome because otherwise, yeah, it doesn't really scale. Then, like one really huge performance gain we got from Beam was something called byte-based shuffle, because Beam kind of like have an abstract concept of serialization. So only data that Spark sees are actually bytes. So like during shuffle, Spark just doesn't need to deserialize it all, all the time and doesn't need to use any like custom comparators. So th this was like really really huge performance gain. And what you can do if you want to debug Spark pipelines, uh, there is this really great tool, it's called Babar, it's from Criteo. Uh, I don't know much about the company. Uh, but it gives you like all of the information about like containers that were allocated, about memory your job was using, uh, about, uh, about CPU, about garbage collection, and the best thing it gives you, it gives you a flame graph of your job. Uh, this is a really great tool if you want to profile it and if you're like trying to find out why the job completion takes so long. For example, we were able to find that there was like really nasty issue with combiners in Beam that uh, like every single time you added something to combine accumulator you just like need to serialize and deserialize it. And it was really easy fix, but it's really too hard to know that you have to fix it without like properly profiling the pipeline, because this is something that tests just cannot catch. And of course, heap dumps are very useful. So like right now, we were able to run our like biggest pipeline we had uh, on Spark Runner. So I would say it's production ready right now for batch. Uh, for streaming, there are some ongoing works. And if you're more interested in Apache Beam, uh, there will be another great talk. The next session, it will be by Thomas, is about streaming your share right. So it's like, and then there is a Beam Summit Europe happening this Wednesday and Thursday. It's actually at the same place as Berlin Buzzword, so, and it's free, so you're free to like register and you will be very welcome to show up. Okay, so that's all for me. And if, you, if you'll have any questions, I'll just be around and you can ask me anytime. Thank you.